tyre they use at the Australian Grand Prix so successfully, proving very effective at Phillip Island this afternoon too. Whoa! Oh, oh look where he's heading. Goodness me, there's going to be a big accident. Murphy, straight on. Wow. Charlie Hattie. Well, I think something had to break in the car there. It is a very fast corner, as we know, but he just went straight off. Never even looked like turning around the last part of the corner. Some that major steering problem or something. That would have been a terrifying ride for Greg Murphy. Let's hope he's OK. He's hit that wall very, very hard. Look at the damage to the front of the car. Greg Murphy, well, he's conscious. It looks like he's talking to his crew. He's pushing that button on the wheel. Let's hope he's OK. Well. He looks like he might be, but boy, he would have taken the wind, wind out of him, that impact. The front of that car is just completely destroyed. Greg's getting out of the car, and as we said, we hope that he's all right. Well, full credit to the guys who build these cars, because look at the strength of that chassis. Murphy can walk out of that. He's had a major impact. Look at that. He really has had the wind knocked out of him. Yes, he'd be reeling after that, not only because he's out of the race, he's out of the points, but uh, that would have been uh, very hurtful. Yeah, we may have a red flag situation here. We're just checking with race control. But Murphy lying on the grass there. Yeah, red flag's out. So let's uh, have a look at this incident. Greg Murphy there, some people in attendance. Here is the replay. Now watch him. He just doesn't make the corner. He just goes straight ahead. So, Charlie, there's got to be some steering yes, problems. Yes, definitely. Either something mechanical or a tyre is deflated. Now watch this. Full impact, unabated speed. Car pow! Almost like a bomb going off. Look at the dirt get lifted up. He rolls it over, and fortunately, the car ends back on its wheels. Mark, there's plenty of runoff room there. There's a, a long way between the track, <coughs> excuse me, uh, between the track and the barrier. But what a shame there's not some sort of uh, slowing down device there because it could have saved that sort of damage. Well, every year they find a place. Here's Peter Brock, his teammate, looking very concerned as he came la past last time, and well, may he do so. Any driver who's been in an impact that intensity would know how frightening it is and the risk of injury how high well let's remember uh, look back to last year here at Phillip Island Craig Lowndes had that horrific accident and Peter Brock himself over on the back part of the circuit he went into the tyre wall as well so uh, Phillip Island is proving not to be a very uh, happy hunting ground for the mobile HRT outfit let's have a look at that again at normal speed we saw the slow-mo replay now here Murphy just straight off the side of the track and he has, looks like he has no steering control at all. A shocking accident. Mark, quite interesting there. When the car gets closer to the tyre barrier, it's actually digging the right-hand front spoiler into the ground, which would tend to think that, yes, a tyre has deflated and it's actually digging the wheel in. Greg Murphy was, uh, well, nothing but a passenger in that one, just waiting uh, for the impact with that tyre wall. You can see that all of the relevant people are in attendance to take care of Greg. Some of the HRT boys that on site there as well well we're just saying what a fine line these guys are riding you think of the average speed of these cars at Phillip Island when you when something goes wrong with the car you really pay a heavy price well he's a, uh, a fit young guy and uh, let's hope that he pulls through that one okay we did see him get out of the car and uh, I'm sure that they'll just be uh, checking him out making sure that he is okay certainly the car has sustained a huge amount of damage coming in contact with that wall we were uh, almost at the end of the second race. In fact, uh, they were just about to complete lap 10. Here is the Shell Helix race score for you. Russell Ingle at the time was in the lead. Perkins was in second. Seaton was in third. Bow fourth and Jones fifth. That is the end of that race. We've just had information. We'll be back after this break. Well, if you've just joined us, this is a replay of Greg Murphy's terrible accident he had on the final turn before the main straight. Watch the third car in shot. It does not take the turn and just goes straight ahead. Now, the word that we have got is that Greg had a deflated right front tyre. He uh, had lost control of the car and he has gone straight in. So, rolls over and that was a very, very hard impact. Let's go down to Mark Osler. Well, after that dreadful accident for Greg Murphy in Heat 2, I managed to track down the Holden Racing Team publicity officer, Paul Weissel. Paul, uh, what's his condition? He's um, probably feeling a bit bruised and winded at the moment, Mark, but uh, basically OK. He'll be kept there for observation and taken probably to Cowes Hospital uh, so the doctors can make sure. But he's uh, chatting away to us and feeling a little bit uh, sad and sorry about what happened to a, him, the race and the car. 
Any theories on what went wrong with the car? It would seem at this stage that there's been a blowout in the right front, which of course on that corner coming onto the straight takes you straight off the road and straight into the tyre walls here at the island. Any chance of fixing the car? That looked like pretty heavy damage. Yeah, I've got a sneaking suspicion that um, maybe our Bathurst winning car from 1996 is uh, no longer a racing concern, but we'll take it back and uh, let the Den Car boys have a look at it on uh, Monday, Tuesday and make a decision from there. Okay, Paul, thanks for your time.